mix up in the database. And uh, patents is just one way to allow developers to take control. I like to uh, use this metaphor, which is you can think of a website as a living being. Uh, you have set center configuration, and that's the DNA. So somehow it's like we're trying to structure this DNA in a small pieces, and then you, uh, we're going to put it in the file. And then this DNA can be combined, and recombined, and can evolve you know, like, like a living being. So this is the idea of patterns. It's trying to bypass this bottleneck of the configuration. Uh, the approach that we we take in patterns is based on two ideas. First one is the components. I will explain in more detail now, in more detail. And the other one is storing the configuration in files. Patterns components. Um, each Drupal module will have uh, a component, which basically acts as a software driver to connect certain Drupal module with patterns. And uh, how do I do that? Uh, well, patterns define a set of hooks, like several phases, like prepare phase, uh, validate phase, a callback phase. So when you are creating a component, you are going to implement all those hooks, and depending on the, the module you are working with, you will need some hooks, or all of them. Or, and um, it's going to allow you to, to hook into the system at that point. The idea is basically we take the configuration from the database. We uh, are going to create a file through all these phases. We're going to prepare that data. We're going to validate that data. And we're going to end up with a file, which is going to be in different. Uh, we can choose the format. Some more details now. But uh, by default, it's done. And uh, these actions, uh, this file, later I'm going to be able to execute it through the Drupal form API. That's more or less what I so this is more like the structure. So this is the Drupal form API. I have the, my patterns module. I have a set of modules. I have to write a component for each of them to talk to patterns. In this interaction, we're going to create a set of files, like a YAML file, for instance, which is going to be uh, composed by a set of actions and metadata. I'll see an example. We'll show you an example. But this more or less the the other difference is uh, the patterns of structure configurations in files. And uh, one good thing that uh, we have managed to do in patterns is that there is not any dependency with a specific format. The architecture is completely the mm -hmm. So you can even uh, implement your own uh, patterns, parse, hook. And let's say if I want to uh, export them in JSON, you can do that. There are three uh, formats supported at the moment. One is YAML. It's, uh, it's becoming very popular with Drupal uh, 8. It's basically uh, another markup language, very you know, human readable. It's very easy to read. It's supporting also XML, which, for instance, makes more sense in case of interoperability. And it's supporting PHP arrays, which are not readable at all. But uh, in terms of performance, for instance, it would be interesting. <coughs> These uh, patterns files I have divided in sections. Uh, we have some kind of uh, some metadata, the author of the pattern, the category of that pattern, the version, description, and a set of subsections. Uh, actions like uh, create, modify, delete, and include. This is more or less if you think about it like the CRUD uh, operations we have in databases. Uh, include is uh, that you can uh, put a pattern instead of another pattern. It's a recursive. And this is more or less, I hope you can read. Uh, how a pattern file look like. So we have this metadata. This is the title. It's a very stupid pattern that basically is creating a vocabulary, modifying that vocabulary, and deleting the vocabulary. But this just to show uh, the three operations. <coughs> and you see it's YAML, you know, it's readable. Uh, patterns uh, one for Drupal 7. Uh, the, person, uh, the person one will allow you to write or reuse patterns that are already developed for some components. Uh, mostly all uh, the important uh, modules from the core. You will be able also to make your module patterns ready. And it will provide you uh, a way to explore configuration, but in a raw way. I mean, uh, you need some human being in there taking a look to the file. And, and it's, it's not automatic. 
and uh, what today we like to introduce patterns version two. We released it uh, two three days ago just for uh, for count. <laughs> Uh, uh, there are three main differences in uh, patterns too. First one is that uh, we have implemented two layers, one of syntactic validation and one of semantic validation. Uh, semantic validation will provide some feedback and can be helpful in order to uh, solve the conflict, we'll see. The other difference is the extraction of the configuration has been improved. Uh, and it's more uh, flexible now. So, <coughs> And the another one is that uh, it provides compatibility with uh, two other modules that they are in GitHub yet, they are not in Drupal or yet. But uh, the idea is to create uh, patterns, server and client that relies on Drupal to Drupal module. So these patterns can be shared, or people can also you know, uh, set up their own server. Uh, that's the idea. So. More detail, syntactic and semantic patterns. Uh, when I went to Manchester, actually, I uh, had a discussion with Alex, and uh, we were discussing about it. I mean, at some point, if you need to solve all of these dependencies, because our first approach is like, let's create something like apt get in Linux. It's impossible, I mean, <laughs> with our resources. So, we're discussing a little bit, and uh, uh, we need some human intervention. So, uh, our approach was, okay, let's do something similar to what you have when you are uh, using a compiler. Okay, the system is going to give me a pattern, and I'm going to provide some help, but still I rely on the developer to you know, modify that pattern and make it perfect for itself. So it's a very similar approach from the compilers, there are two separate layers. Then we have different errors, things like, okay, this element has already been defined, and this element has not been defined, there is a dependency with other component. It's, it's very close to the database, so we need things like not unique alias as well. And uh, well, the difference between, uh, <coughs> it's a rule of thumb, the difference between the errors is that the syntactic errors are wrong grammar statements, obviously. Semantic warnings are related to the, the meaning of the pattern itself. I mean, a pattern can be perfectly syntactically valid in certain contexts, but if I try to execute that pattern in another website, something is going to be wrong. So that's uh, the kind of semantic words we're talking about. This relationship is inclusive, so if, uh, if a pattern uh, is semantically valid, it will always be syntactically valid, but not the other way around. This is an example. You can see, but well, basically, we have a pattern that is great in a couple of roles, a role called researcher and a role called student. This pattern is syntactically valid, it's perfect, but if I execute it in this type, in this uh, website, there are already a couple of roles for research and student, and it's going to give me a couple of warnings. So it's a task of the developer to say, okay, I have to remove them, or I have to modify them. The, the second new feature we have included in Patterns 2 is uh, we have improved mainly the export functions, and uh, now it's more dynamic in the sense that we're analyzing all the components. And we realized that uh, there were two very different use cases. One is uh, using patterns for uh, fresh installation. Like, okay, I like someone's patterns on one website, I want to reuse that on my website. And uh, this is very related to great actions. So uh, when you are creating, I mean, you can export now a pattern as a set of great actions. Uh, there's another use case which is more like, okay, I'm moving uh, configuration from uh, dev to test, or test to production, these kind of things. Then usually it's more this kind of modified actions. You can, of course, mix them, combine them, you know, these kind of things. But now, before, uh, everything was mixed up, and now you can choose through the user interface the kind of actions you want to create. Uh, when we're thinking about this, we realize that, um, I mean, depending on the component, certain actions may, 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 may not make sense, like for instance, what does it mean to create a color? It's probably nothing, because color is, is a variable that is always there. So some actions are kind of forbidden, or they don't make sense for the system. <coughs> Still, I mean, uh, it's, it's a model of the developer to interpret this. And this is how the user interface looks now. So uh, let's say I'm exporting uh, from the component user, I'm going to export all the roles. And now I can choose, okay, create a set of modify actions or create actions. Uh, the last uh, big new thing is uh, 
who is telling this server client. So the idea is uh, we are developing two other modules. One is called Pattern Server, where another one is called Patterns Client that rely on Drupal to Drupal. And the idea is to have uh, a pattern server where uh, people you know, they can exchange patterns, they can rate them, these kind of things. And the patterns can be pushed via user interface or so with Rust. Uh, patterns also work with Rust. Uh, it's implemented as a module. So if let's say I want to have my own server for my uh, team. And it provides functionalities like search patterns, generate this kind of statistics, and, uh, sets by category. Let's see. This uh, this domain, DrupalPatterns.org. I mean, if you go right now, it's not going to work. But uh, <laughs> the idea is that this is going to be like the default pattern server. So if people want to, you know, make things public, they just need to uh, when they install patterns, they can just push it, and it will go there. And this is how the, I mean, the user interface will change. This is uh, quite new. But uh, the idea is that okay, we'll have a table with a set of patterns. And uh, we'll provide, okay, this is uh, the pattern, the metadata. So one question. When I talk about patterns, the question is, okay, but what is the difference between patterns and features? Or what is the difference between patterns and uh, Distribution, for instance, a distribution is very obvious now, but um, I will go now in detail for all of them. The distribution, I think, is quite obvious. I mean, first, in terms of granularity, the, the configuration can be split in a smaller definition. Simplicity, like, I think it's easier to write download files than write uh, an installation profile, and can be used in existing sites. In this case. More interesting is the case of uh, features or features in combination with the Strona. The first difference, from my point of view, is in terms of paradigm. I think features. Uh, is use case oriented and patterns is more content management oriented. I'll explain this, I think. I mean, features is awesome, but I think we are using features for configuration management, and that was not the original purpose. There is a really interesting post uh, from Tom Renkov about that. The second difference is in terms of storage. Uh, features stores the configuration in Drupal modules, uh, patterns does it in, in files as uh, the configuration management is in the And the uh, third one is in terms of implementation as well. Features use module specific APIs, like use API. Patterns use mostly uh, form API, although can also use specific uh, APIs as well. But yes, as we are saying, the trick is basically in two platform service. So what I'm doing is just basically, OK, I'm starting some configuration from the database. And refining it, I'm storing it, and then I'm executing it in form. It's the same way as when I'm doing when I'm clicking. There is an advantage of in, in this approach is that uh, when we are using form suite, the evaluation will get for free. You don't have to write anything. The disadvantage, of course, is that there's a performance. It's more slower. It's a slower probably to execute a pattern. That and then the question of the future. Uh, when I started, I started some months ago working with patterns, and we were, I was discussing with my colleagues, okay, what we're going to do with patterns for Drupal 8. And uh, then the configuration management is the game, <laughs> which is awesome news. <laughs> I mean, we're very, very happy about it. We're very enthusiastic. I contacted Alex, and uh, at the beginning, there is another issue to address, which is, uh, okay, we need to bundle this kind of functionality somehow to create features or a package that can be reused on another site. This would be maybe features version 3 or uh, patterns version 3. And uh, patterns as features is currently combined and uh, it's mixing both things. And, uh, and we sent a, an, an email to, uh, well, send some, some emails with uh, Mike Potter, the developer of features. And I think it would be awesome to, you know, to collaborate because since we are working in the same direction, in the direction I think there is a gap that we are going to need to cover in some contributed modules. Uh, patterns and features, they you know they mix uh, the same thing, both of them. But I think we need really need to cover this 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 gap. We'll see, <laughs> but we'll be delighted to to contribute. So getting a bit picky. Just so wanted to show you a bit. Uh, okay, how can I make my module uh, patterns right? Basically, what you need to do is you need to implement uh, patterns in which you are going to declare the actions that your module is able to interpret. 
like for instance in this case, uh, modify. And, okay, uh, this is the form that I'm going to use to execute. That's the key. Uh, depending, as I was saying before, depending on the phase, uh, we are going to do some kind of operations for that data. Uh, this is a diagram in GitHub, uh, but I, mean, I won't go into detail because uh, it's quite, but uh, you have a prepare phase where you prepare all this data. Then you can have some extra validation that maybe the form API is not going to give you. You can add some extra callbacks, then you build those data. In case you need some extra parameters, you have an overhook. And in case once you have executed, you need to do some kind of cleanup. Uh, you can also uh, hook, uh, use this cleanup hook. There is a, a diagram in GitHub about it, the faces. That's one step. At that point, my, my mouth is able to uh, understand patterns, but it's not able to export patterns automatically. And that's the other, uh, that's the next step. What we need to do is in these patterns, you will need to declare, okay, I'm able to export, in this case, I'm going to export the whole configuration, and this function is going to be the one who is taking care of And, well, writing that function, it depends a lot on the component. I mean, the color is like the most simple uh, component ever. It's very easy, but uh, views, for instance, is very tricky. <laughs> this is an example with uh, permissions, for instance. Uh, I just get the array of the permissions, I iterate through it, I prepare the set of actions, I return the result. Future work. Uh, well, we're creating now new sites based on the, this distribution, the science. Uh, first one, I'm migrating a site from Jungla <laughs> to Drupal. <laughs> yeah, the rest. <laughs> site, which is the, the department I work for. We also want to use Q Science in the Qlectis project website itself. Uh, there's another use case. The page is at the end of the slides. Uh, it's the uh, Conocisis Forums, which is a uh, website in the field of and one thing we want to improve is the compatibility between patterns uh, and pattern server and the Drupal to Drupal modules. We uh, will need to write some more components for uh, science. We have some custom modules for science, and uh, if we have time, we would like to write some more uh, components for the most important modules like views. I mean, we don't support country modules yet. Views, tools, OG, and of course, the right continuity in the field of uh, the configuration management for Drupal. Uh, documentation. Uh, there are like 30 pages already published in Drupal.org. <laughs> this is the address. Uh, it's, I mean, there are sections for Drupal uh, for patterns for Drupal 6. Uh, nothing to do with Drupal 7. Okay, but, uh, the first thing you choose is the version. Uh, the release of uh, patterns 2 for Drupal 7 was just three four days ago, so uh, we have to extend that documentation. <laughs> and uh, we are planning also to create you know, some video tutorials to show it. And well, we have a, a group at Drupal Authority, this uh, patterns group. So every idea, suggestions, patches, issues, please join us and you're very welcome. Love the feedback of the community. These are the links I was talking about. The first one I have about patterns group, the collectives, and this is the Cube Science repository. That like projects in there. So <laughs> when something is stable, we move always like move to the top of then there are a couple of deliverables. This is the kind of deliverable you sent to the European Commission. But uh, uh, this one is about patterns for version one. It's the last year. This is not officially published yet, but it was sent to the European Commission two, three days ago. So it should be published very soon. And there is a section talking about uh, patterns uh, version two. That will move to the Drupal for We are publish about it for the moment. And this is the kind of this forum, which is another is the use case where we have at the moment like running this uh, QSI in this instance. So, time for the demo. So, first I want to show you. First case, I want to show you this as. Uh, how to execute a pattern, a very easy one. So, and on the front page, there's nothing in there, it's just a 
And this is how they use the phrase of patterns. Okay. I have a list of patterns. I can quick run. Let's say it's not very good on Instagram, but uh, if you want to write some code directly, you can do it there. You can create a new pattern. Then you have all the patterns categorized. Yeah, I have a lot of them. So this. This is the export. You mean? You can also import, you can import patterns from a URL, and set it. For example, I have a pattern for a lot of So this is my pattern, which is going to create a block. I want to execute, I mean, if I execute, I think that. Okay, this is a pattern that has been created automatically using the export. But if I run the semantic validation, it's going to tell me, okay, there is already a problem with that name. So now it's a task of the developer to take a decision to that. So I just want to rename it. Both users have been updated because I didn't delete the other action. That's called the network. Another example is uh, I'm going to do exactly the same, but now I'm going to export as I say to create. So basically what happened is that uh, 
will have a change. We have to change our public keys, and uh, these two instances, they are now frames. One is executed another module for the pattern server, the other one is pattern client. So, as a client now, I'm going to go to patterns and say I'm going to push. hundreds of thousands of installations and yeah, I mean I'm not saying that we can replace features but it's just you know another approach yeah and for the future I think we can uh, probably I don't know maybe merge or take some ideas of both or, but I really believe that we have this gap like now that we have the, the, the configuration storing files we need something in there like you know to pack all this okay could we use I mean features for configuration and uh, Patterns for data migration, so for content migration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use both. 